This is the Dental Up Podcast, your daily source for insights from dentists and leaders in the industry. Brought to you by Keating Dental Lab, a full-service, award-winning dental lab that is here to add value to your dental practice. With high-quality restorations, friendly, reliable service, the best products, and prices, come experience the Keating difference. Visit KeatingDentalLab.com for details. Welcome back to the Dental Lab Podcast. I'm your host, Bob Brandon, the General Manager here at Keating Dental Lab, and thanks for joining us again today. I hope you all had a great weekend, and I hope some of you still have an intact March Madness bracket, but if you're like me and had Kentucky going to the Final Four, well, then better luck next year. But that's what makes it fun, right? There's always seems to be a big-time upset that people will talk about after the first weekend. Well, I guess it's fun except if you're a player on that losing team, but hopefully that motivates them to take it up a notch next year. I remember a few years back, Virginia was a one seed and they got knocked out in the first round. So what happens next year? Tony Bennett circles the wagons, got his guys focused on the prize at the end of the year, and they won it all. They brought home a championship to UVA. Enough basketball. Let me introduce our guest today. He's an Ivy League graduate, a practicing dentist for over 35 years, and a true dental innovator. There's not many out there, but Dr. Paul Hertz holds seven patents in the dental field. And he's here today to share his journey what motivates him to create, and explain what's on the horizon. Please join me in welcoming to the Dental Up podcast, my good friend, Dr. Paul Hertz. Good morning, Dr. Hertz. Thank you for joining us today on the Dental Up podcast. I know you're busy and we'll get down to it, but hey, we've we've known each other, it seems like forever. And I think our both of our kids tease us about, we talk to each other more than we do sometimes our own family. But for the Dental Up podcast world, tell us a little bit about how you started your journey in dentistry. Where'd you go to dental school? Where was your first practice and everything? All right. Well, Bob, thank you so much for having me on. My history in dentistry is basically Keating. I graduated in 1986 from the University of Pennsylvania, and I went to work. Well, I was a resident then for a year at Albert Einstein. Uh, medical center here in New York. Uh, my, I joined my father's practice uh, in Riverdale, where I have been and remained. Probably was almost, it was probably a, a year, if not even less, out of school that I started working with you and Sean when you guys were at another lab, pre yep, key I remember. And then I, and then I, and then I when Sean started, he, uh, you guys kind of reached out and said, please come with us. And I was very happy to, because I always got along with you guys and you always did good work for me. And that is my history with feeding. I mean, this is uh, 34 years later, I think. Yep. This is a real relationship. I mean, this is what this business is all about is you see a patient, you are presented with a problem. You pick up the phone, you call the lab, your lab's there. You guys, you know, we talk about it. We talk about, gosh, we probably talk about 10 cases a day, it seems like, but you know, that's, that's really, that's the relationship and that's what it takes to be successful. Oh, oh yeah. I mean, I, there are cases that, that I I'm seeing now and and I kind of say, you know, remember when we did this and we had that problem and now I've got to straighten this out here somewhere else. (laughs) And, And this is something that, you know, occurred 10 years ago. And, and there's a recollection of it. It's, it's really rather remarkable and, and yep. really beneficial for me. Um, or the, and the cases where you're where you're rebuilding a patient's entire mouth and it takes five, six, 10 years to get there. And, you know, we have to sort of plan in sequence for this this prolonged treatment plan. Yes, yeah, it's true. It is that in, in my population pool, um, we usually don't come across people who can just throw all uh, everything out at once. And so have to break this down for quite a while. And that's the reality. I mean, that's still, that's, I, I feel that's probably 99% of the, the dental patient population. It is a rarity where you get somebody that's willing to hand over $25,000 in cash for a, for a full arch or full mouth rehab. So I, I know you made, um, you, you've made some, some nice, uh, purchases for your practice recently and upgraded your technology. Tell the Dental Up podcast crowd what, what you bought and, and why you got it. Tell us about your three shape. <laughs> okay. Well, yes. Now I've had the three shape. Now it's actually going on five years. Excellent. And that, you know, certainly use it multiple times a day uh, between my uh, 
ortho, and then of course my ground and bridge work. You know, we're we're in the very beginning. I actually kind of fought it because I felt that I maybe was more conservative than a lot of the contemporaries that I speak with, and that I don't put crowns on very quickly. I, I wait, and I, and actually that's part of what I feel is the success that I've had over the years is that I do the minimum to have success because uh, economics is really big in this population. Uh, Problems with economics are big in my population. So I don't run to do crowns. And so by the time I end up doing crowns, most of them are very subgingival. So I said, where am I going to use this if I can't get a clean margin or I'm always dealing in bloody fields. But I have found with time that, you know, with my skill level, I'm really able to do most of my cases with the, the three shape. You know, there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a bit to learn to do that, but it's worked out very nicely. And, and that's, that's a fantastic comment because, you know, technology or doing something new does, does scare off a lot of people, but it's, it's, Getting the getting the technology in your hands, learning how to use it, and and adapting, really just changing your workflow. You know, maybe a little bit, maybe not a little bit, but you know, really just learning learning what the technology does for you. I mean, we have a number of number of customers that have said that exact thing, and they abandon ship. It's like you know, don't abandon ship. The technology will work if you put the work into you know making it making it right and making it do its job. So I, I applaud you on, on sticking with it because, and I've seen your scans. I say your scans every day, they're clean, even though, you know, your, your patient demographic is mostly elderly patients with, you know, some recession and you have really long, really long preps because your patients have really long teeth and a lot of it is, is deep and sub but you've made the technology work perfectly. And, I mean, even on some of the Emacs cases we did a couple of weeks ago that, you know, th- those mill out, we've got, you know, we can see your margin and, and those will mill out just fine. Uh, well, yes, um, I, I prefer the Emacs cases, but the other part of that is in the beginning, I wasn't a hundred percent comfortable, didn't like the margins that I was getting back. You know, the force infused to metal because of the lucency of the metal hides a lot of the errors that the translucency of the Emacs kind of still leave you there. Yep. So your cases really have to be good as opposed to just looking good on X-ray. And in the be- beginning, I wasn't as happy with all of the seal that I was getting. And it took really a discussion with you know some of the techs to get it right. But now that I feel very comfortable with that, it, I'm really getting wonderful results. Thank Excellent. you, Peter. That that's good to hear. And and again, that's that's part of the relationship. That's part of identifying the problem, going back into the lab steps and trying to, you know, figure out what we can do a little bit differently to get the results 100% perfect. And and we do, you know, we we do that and we try to do that with with every customer in every case and, you know, sometimes it's it's one or two adjustments, sometimes it's six, seven, or 10 adjustments that we have to make. But that's been our philosophy here at the lab is, you know, we want the open communication and talking about problems will get us a good solution for your patients. Absolutely. So I, I know you have, you have two children that are in their, in their twenties, I think. And what, what, what type of advice would you give to, to a young dentist that is just starting out in this field? The biggest concern that I've, or issue that I've had Um, speaking with new dentists is they're really coming out with a lot of debt in most cases. And that often leads to the need to produce. And that can actually end up being a very detrimental thing. You just really have to do the right thing with the patients. And what I mean by that is you have to not be thinking about how can I make money on this? Because the way you're going to make money on this eventually is by creating a relationship with the patients so that they're coming back for a long time. Absolutely. If they feel that 
you're possibly taking advantage or doing a little more than you should or could have done it in a less expensive way for them, that's going to haunt you in the long run and patients won't stay. And unfortunately, that's a real difficult balance for a lot of young dentists these days. And that's exactly the relationship and what I respect about having worked with your lab for so long. I always feel that you guys are looking to do the best job for me at that moment. And because of that, we've had this long-term relationship. And I've tried, even though you've been my basic lab, you know, my standard lab, I've tried other labs. I, you know, a uh, little secret there. And of course, you know, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. No, no. Especially when you bought the three shape and you had the guy would drive to your office and sit out on the street and mill you the crowns and then bring them in. I mean, I thought that was a pretty cool business model, actually. Yeah, that was a good, cool business model. But, well, also at that time, because of some of the, well, I do, as you know, I do a lot of research and product development and I'm just tinkering all the time with different things. And there was a time, too, when I was working with a particular, he was supposed to be a tech expert, and we started, and he was the one who actually pushed me very hard to start with the three shape at that point. And I was doing a lot of cases with him in the beginning, mm -hmm. always having, you know, you working with you guys, too. But yeah, I took things slowed down for a while. And that was, you know, it's quite an experience working with other labs, seeing really what's out there. and. As you know, I keep coming back. Yeah, uh, so I, I have I have most of the really high tech stuff right now, and I like to play with it. And I like to adapt it, and I I do. I, I have this, as you know, I have this team. I have I have a, a chemist in Houston. Yep. I have a physicist who's actually wow, actually now he's in Finland. Uh, I hope he comes back soon because this has been making it difficult. Uh, but I have these teams that, you know, I'm, I'm working with uh, Stern Gold in, in Boston. And you were doing a lot of really, really interesting research and development. Now, I'm, I'm just loving it. Now, it's kind of like my, my other hobby or career, which is as, a, as a, an artist. <laughs> right. where I'm glad I'm not doing that to make a living. You know, I still, <laughs> I, I, I still go back to uh, being a general dentist and cleaning teeth and, you know, I always tell people how uh, this is uh, such a romantic job where I spend my life picking stuff from between people's teeth and, and everybody I meet either bleeds or spits on me. So there you go. Well, that's, that's an interesting way to, to put it, but it, but it does pay the bills and it does allow you, you know, enough, enough time, enough time to, you know, also focus on your innovation. I mean, uh, you know, there's, there's very few, individuals out there that are true innovators. You're one of them. And I've always admired you for that. And this goes back probably 10, 12 years, you know, when you came up with the concept of the delineator and the name and, and it's been a very successful product for us. Tell us if you, if you can remember exactly what was the, what some of the factors were that, that made you develop this product called the delineator. And then, you know, then we'll get into SDI and everything. Well, the, the impetus is, always the same. It's, it's what problems am I having in my general dentist practice? What are the issues that I'm coming across that are need help, that, that, are, that are difficult for me, that are difficult for my patients? And looking at that and trying to think, okay, the solution right now looks like this, and that's not really quite working the way I would like it to. So how can I improve upon that? to make it easier for everybody. No, that's perfect. I mean, you're starting with a clinical need and you're observing a lack of either materials or sequence um, that, that solves the need. And then you come up with, you come up with a way to fix this problem and it's great. So, you know, tell us about, you know, an edentulous space and, you know, how you were treating, you know, how, how you were diagnosing and treating these patients you know, before you came up with the concept of the delineator? Well, the delineator was really meant to replace the very, um, I think, horrible flippers. I mean, and nobody's happy with them. They're aesthetic, but they move around and they, people talk funny and food gets caught and they're always a problem. And then there was the issue of 
always having to do or finding myself doing complex abutments to straighten things out because the implants weren't placed exactly where I would have liked them to, either by myself or the surgeon. And so I felt if I worked backwards and we decided that the tooth or the final prosthetic should look in a certain way, uh, and then from that said, if we wanted to work that way, and if we would desire to work with stock parts to reduce the cost, then this is where that implant has to be. Yeah, so for, so for those of you listening that aren't familiar with the delineator, the, the concept was really a, a, a diagnostic wax up, a surgical guide, and a flipper all in one, all in one prosthesis. And Dr. Hertz worked with us, you know, 10, 12 years ago on the sequence and the materials to really, to really perfect this. And I mean, it, it, it saves your patients money and time, right? Oh, absolutely. Oh, and, and no doubt. I mean, I, I, my, the concept of what I wanted to do, I presented actually to you, Bob, and, and you made it happen. I mean, I, the material aspect is a hundred percent your development. And I really appreciate the effort and, you know, giving, you know, working with me to develop this. So it, it, it's been a wonderful project, you know, and it's been a lot of fun. It, it has. And, and we feel that we feel absolutely the same and, and we're, we're very excited. I'm very excited. And, you know, you, you told me about your meeting with Sterngold and, and everything. And so now let's, let's kind of go into the, the concept of your, your SDI guided product. Okay. Now, once again, this starts from the fact that I have a lot of patients who can't afford to do full mouth reconstruction with implants or sure. even long span bridges or long span dentures areas. So SDI guided stands for SDI is small diameter implant. And the, what we are doing is using a lot of existing technologies and changing the way they're being used to produce rapidly and very inexpensively fixed prosthetics for people who were very unhappy with their distal expansion partials, who really would love to get rid of a removable in total, but can't afford the time and the expense of conventional implants. Now, I'm not looking to compete with conventional implants. I'm looking to add a new market of patients and of dentists, because this is so simple that any dentist will be able to do this very easily. And what we're doing is we're actually, and, and, and it took a long time, it took Oh, seven years to get this patent. Uh, and, and we worked very hard on this. It's seven years and I think maybe eight rejections during that time for silly things because the concept basically stayed the same. But what we're doing is we're making the final prosthetic first and using it as the drill guide and putting a multitude of small diameter implants, less than three millimeters, placed divergently through the prosthetic, and then removing that holding device that's going to be a cross arch stabilization to hold the prosthetic in place when you're placing it. And the patient leaves on that first visit with this prosthetic in place. The fact that you're using small diameter implants placed divergently spreads the stresses so that you're never getting above the point where osseointegration is damaged. Now, of course, just like uh, an all-on four, you have to have a soft diet and, you know, you have to really stay very, you know, gingerly on the area for a little while, but this is really very exciting and, and, and it's coming very soon. Absolutely. And I remember when you first presented this concept, I, what stuck in my head was, oh my gosh, you're, you're recreating, you're recreating human anatomy. You know, you're, you're putting in implants that are going to, you're putting in multiple implants that are going to act as, as roots, real, real roots, not just one implant, not just one wide implant, not just one short, fat, wide implant, but you're putting in multiple implants at divergent angles that will act as roots to retain the prosthesis. Yep. Very exciting. I mean, at this moment, we're still, I guess, theoretical, but we're getting very close because, you know, we, we, we're, working on the final 
requirements for the FDA to bring this to our clinical trial, which is not necessary, but you know you have to be able to, you know, sure. prove your 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 product. And, and I very very excited about that. That's in the works as well. So it will not be very long before we have this available for the market. Very excited. It's fantastic. I mean, it's it, I, I know it's a lot of work. I, I know we've talked many times about the frustrations of patent refusal and then you know you got to go back and it seems like for years and years the only people that make money off of this are lawyers but you know i i I see the light at the end of the tunnel for sure i mean it's it is coming to market and it'll probably be another one to two years but you know all your your efforts have are certainly going to pay off this and it and it's going to fill a fill a void that's you know that's currently lacking in in the marketplace so Again, kudos to you and and your your all your painstaking efforts, and I'm I'm very excited to see this this final this final design and this concept come to fruition. What about what about the materials? Tell us what you envision the the final the final restoration to to be like. Well, the, the concept now is to use uh, 3D printing to create both the prosthetic slash drill guide and the stent, uh, which will be cross arch. And the prosthetic is held in the stent, but is a separate casting, but all done in the same print job. Right now, the first FDA accepted long term use material for 3D printing is the Bego material. We've been experimenting with that. Uh, and it's really been quite wonderful. Uh, because it's basically an acrylic based material, so we can also adjust and adapt to it. And the the expansion of 3D printing is just unbelievable. And, and that's going to be our future. Oh, it is. And you know, the the subtracted method of you know milling and grinding, it's very cost effective and it's very easy for us to do, but it generates a lot of waste. It takes, you know, burrs and tools and that adds cost and then it takes human beings to remove these units from, you know, from a puck or disc of material. But yeah, 3D printing is is definitely the future. And I know there's companies out there that are working on printing zirconia, and that's that's going to be that's going to be here in the next uh, in the next couple of years as well. Well, yes, yeah, certainly now titanium and zirconia printing is uh, seen throughout and is used actually a lot in orthopedics at the moment. So yeah. it's really just a matter of time before it's adapted to demo use. Right. Yeah. No, it's it's coming. And uh, I, I think a lot of these advances in the materials and the restorative materials are are going to be a are going to be vital to the to the success and popularity of of your SDA guided SDI guided procedures. And yeah, I mean it's it it's also very cost effective and that's you know, that was another one of your goals was to bring the cost of treatment down for your patients. Absolutely. I'm, I'm actually expecting it to be between a third and a half of what conventional implantology uh, would cost the patient at this point. One of the cases, actually, Bob, you're going to see this case in two weeks. My father-in-law, who is now 94, oh, wow. he, his bridges, which I put in 15 years ago, because he, you know, his first set of dentistry kind of ran its course and failed. We put this in. Now as a 94-year-old, he just, the support is gone. Now, he luckily had the means and even at 94 decided that he wanted to do fixed implants. And we're working on this case, which will now be ready in two weeks or so. But the reality is, I see this situation all the time. Well, I, I'm, I would say there's not a day that goes by that I don't see someone who's over 90 who has the need for dental work. They certainly don't want to spend for fixed implants and go through the surgery and, 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 and wait the six months before that case is completed. Right. This, this is an opportunity now where, okay, maybe we're not going to get, you know, 30 years out of that implant. Maybe we're only going to get 10 years out of uh, the SDI. And that's left yet to be seen. I mean, you know, maybe it will work for a longer period. But with that in mind, and with the reduced cost, we're just opening this up 
to a world of people who were just really having problems at this point. Yeah, ab- absolutely. It's it's about bringing more more treatment and and restorative health to to a segment of the population that might otherwise go, you know, untreated. They might say, "Oh, the cost is too too high," or "Oh, it's going to take too long to to complete this treatment." But with SDI guided, you're now bringing to the table, you know, a new concept that it's going to speed up treatment and reduce the costs. And that's, I mean, that's, that's fantastic. That's, that's going to be a very, it's very successful concept that you've created. Well, the real, also the ease of this for the dentist is that all they'll be doing, the dentist will be actually taking an intraoral scan and then a CT scan. And then much of the work is actually going to be lab driven and, uh, Obviously, I hope that Keating is a part of, uh, you know, helping create this and then presenting uh, this for for the dentists they work with, where the laboratory will be, as they do, create the design on a crown or conventional uh, implant uh, prosthetic, creating the guide slash prosthetic. And along with that, the implants will be presented, the proper implants for the proper location. So really... The dentist just takes a scan and then the second visit will have everything he needs to place this case in a closed surgical fashion. Because we're dealing with small diameter implants, the surgery is non-existent. It's, it's anesthesia and placement. Again, a very exciting part of this, that there is no complex training for the general dentist to place this. Yeah, it's it's a very exciting concept. You've you've made it very simple. I mean, you know, like you said, it's it, you know, you're taking a scan, you're sent, or two scans, you're sending it to the lab. I mean, we we do the surgical guides every single day here, and and we do monoliths, you know, monolithic crowns with an abutment, and it, it's 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 not a stretch to put the two files together and really do do everything simultaneously. You know, the technology is here the the guided surgery software does allow us to do these sorts of things and it's it's a fantastic marriage here that you've created with you know technology and materials and we're very excited for it yes and it seems to be moving very very rapidly <laughs> finally so i'm so excited about how this is going absolutely i mean you you have a good you have a good manufacturing partner. They've been a trusted name in dentistry for well over a hundred years. I'm I'm very excited that you made that choice. So tell us um, before we wrap up a little bit about your third product, which you know I've been fortunate enough to try and, and witness the witness the results firsthand myself. Really, <laughs> tell us about your bleaching system. Okay, I can do that, uh, but it's not just you know the third. You made it seem like that's all there is. There are more. There actually are several more. So I'm not surprised. But. I'm, I'm, I'm working on, um, I actually have a uh, chemotherapeutic that is for peri implantitis. And that too, as I said, these are the issues that I'm coming across in my practice. How do you deal with these things? You know, these are just, just always so difficult. So I, I'm working on this chemotherapeutic for, for the periimplantitis and for periodontal disease. I also uh, have the tooth brightening product, which is, I call it tooth brightening and t- not tooth whitening because it is not hydrogen peroxide or carbon peroxide based. There's no peroxide in it at all. And it is a chair side process where if the patient chooses to have it done, it can be done immediately after a cleaning in an extra 20 minutes where I'm only charging the patient 175 bucks and I'm getting, wow, as many as eight shades. And without uh, symptomatology, without sensitivity, without gum irritation, I don't have to do because of that. I'm not putting on a dental dam. I'm not protecting the gingiva. I'm just basically doing my cleaning, setting themselves up, setting them up and placing the gel on there and letting them go, you know, and just sitting there for 10 minutes. I do two 10 minute sessions. I finish because what we're doing is actually opening up the tuberosities of the tooth and cleaning in the mouth. I'm not altering uh, the organic structure 
or the inorganic structure. I'm just cleaning, doing a super deep cleaning of the existing tooth, and I'm getting those teeth back to what their original color was. You know, there's going to be a difference. And some people who have dark teeth, well, you know, this is going to help, but it's not going to make all that much difference. But uh, if your problem is that you've got staining from coffee, tea, red wine, whatever, this is a wonderful adjunct. And it is just simple and easy. And, you know, once again, going back to that original question that you had, well, I'm just looking to make my life and my patient's life easier. And that's where we're coming up with this stuff. Man, I, I remember when you came when you came out here, you, you came out to watch Jake play baseball and it was right before the pandemic started and we were in the operatory on that on that Friday before you flew back and the world closed down. But you did it on me and you were explaining everything and I was like, No way, this this is too simple. It, it can't possibly work. But yeah, I mean, I think we got two shades, two shades brighter, even on my my nasty teeth that, you know, again, coffee, tea, red wine. Yeah, I'm all of those, <laughs> but uh, it, it did work. And it was, it was fantastic. And it was so simple. It was, it was really simple. Yeah. And, 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 and the other benefit is that I can, I have many patients now who I do every three months. They just, you know, for that kind of money, that's, it's, it's no more than, uh, you know, having your hair blown out or something. Uh-huh. So there's a lot of people, and, they, and there's no issue with the tooth. As far as I'm concerned, if with bleaching, if your teeth are becoming sensitive, that nerve is being affected negatively. Right. That's not a good thing. You know, and, and so the fact that that's the case is something made me interested in trying to find a better way. You know, I was having problems with my bleaching. I went, first of all, it took too long, too much chair time. Uh, you know, we were using uh, the Zoom products. And uh, you know, occasionally there'd be chemical burns on the gingiva. And, and so many times you would have such sensitivity afterwards or you wouldn't get anything. Right. No positive effect. Yeah. Here for this kind of money, because it costs the doctor an extra 10 bucks and they're getting 175 and it's taken 20 minutes. Okay. That's not a tremendous benefit, and it is a loss lead to the office, but it is helping here. And it's turning that trophy, which is often also a loss lead, you're not making any money on a trophy, into a, you know, I'm, I'm making a couple bucks. And it's, uh, it's, it's fun when patients are excited about it. Yeah, and, and, and on those cases where I've, they're not seeing something, I just say, okay, fine, you know, this didn't work on you. We can try bleaching if you want, mm-hmm. and it's not going to cost you anything. We, we're, not, we're not charging. Right. This, I mean, let's be honest. Who doesn't want brighter teeth? And if you're presenting the patient with a, a very cost-effective option, virtually instantaneously, 20 minutes, I mean, yeah, who's who's not going to want to jump at that? And the, and the number of times that I've, you know, the patient has told me, I don't think I see any difference, is so small that it's – you know, of, of, of no consequence to it. Cause I want people to be happy, you know, especially when it's my thing. You know? Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, it does work. And, and for all you listeners and clinicians out there, you know, we're going to have an exciting offer uh, shortly to try Dr. Hertz's product and definitely look out for the SDI guided product in the next year or so, because this is a, this is a very important project that's finally coming to fruition and, and it's going to help your patients. It's going to help dentistry. Oh, and by the way, we call that one dental detail. Dental detail is the name of the brightening product. Yes. Fantastic. Just like getting your car detailed. That's right. <laughs> probably and probably about the same price. <laughs> Excellent. Well, Dr. Hertz, I can't thank you enough for for sharing your time with us with this this dental up crowd. And yeah, again, I mean, there's there's very few true innovators in the world, and and you're one of them. And you know, again, I, I thank you for all the years of your wonderful friendship and all the discussions that we've had in the past. And and I I certainly look forward to this next phase of uh, product development with you. And, you know, any, anything that we can help you with, we're just a phone call away. Well, thank you. And I appreciate that. And I count on that. So thank you, Bob, particularly. And thank you, Keenan. 
Absolutely. Well, Dr. Hertz, be well. Thanks so much. And we'll, we'll speak again soon. Take care. Yes. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Dental Up podcast, your daily source for insights from dentists and leaders in the industry. This episode is sponsored by Keating Dental Lab, here to add value to your dental practice with high quality restorations, friendly, reliable service, the best products and prices. Come experience the Keating difference. Visit KeatingDentalLab.com for details.